Hi, STEM families. My name is Nicole Bostel. I'm the Director of Communications for STEM School Highlands Ranch, and I will be presenting the Secondary Return to In-Person Learning Plan. This plan is for students who will be returning to either four-day in-person learning or transitioning from virtual to in-person learning after spring break. As a reminder, secondary students who completed the cohort change form can return to for four-day in-person learning on Monday, March 22nd. This form was sent out last week and closed on Tuesday at 5 p.m. As a reminder, we have two academic plans. The first is our hybrid plan where students can attend two or four days in person. Our second plan is our 100% virtual online option. Families can switch between the plans as their needs change after starting on Monday, March 29th but can only do so by emailing Brian Bartlett the week prior to allow for the change to take effect and for our teachers to prepare. Please do not send your student to school if you have not previously informed Ms. Bartlett and received confirmation. This allows for our teachers and our facilities team to plan for your student to be in person. Our board of directors supported DCSD's decision to move forward with four day in-person learning. Additionally, several surrounding school districts are making the move as well, and we believe that we are prepared to welcome back more students. Our staff have been provided with the opportunity to receive a vaccination if they chose, and they've also been given access to the Binax Now program that provides at-home testing kits with a telehealth visit. We are also exploring options to provide the Binax testing for our students where we can. Additionally, Douglas County has moved into the yellow on the COVID dial and Tri-County Health's trending data is showing that we can start to safely bring back students to school. Additionally, we believe that the new close contacts guidance that was introduced in December is allowing for us to contact trace more effectively and prevent outbreaks. This slide has two links that will direct you to additional information on both of these areas. We will continue to require students and staff to wear masks when inside the school building. Additionally, we will continue to promote hand washing and temperature checks at entrances. We will continue to conduct routine daily sanitizing procedures that we've had in place since the start of school. All families and staff should be completing the at-home screener prior to coming to school to ensure that you're not sending your student to school sick. Additionally, we will continue to conduct contact tracing via the guidance shared in December. Please watch the video on the best types of masks for your students to wear in order to prepare for in-person learning. The mask must be worn over the nose at all times unless they are eating or drinking. We ask that you please work with your student to make sure they understand these guidelines. Wearing appropriate masks in the appropriate manner puts our staff at ease and we appreciate the collaboration. Bye now. Important reminders for in-person learners. If your student feels ill or has any of the critical, major or minor symptoms of COVID-19, do not send them to school. With the new close contact procedures that were issued in December, your student will be sent home immediately and it could force your student's class or grade to go remote. We must follow the state guidelines on when your student can return to school for in-person learning. Please also keep in mind that when students come to school sick, it increases the anxiety, fears, and stress of our staff and of other students. If your student is sick, please call the attendance line to report their absence. This slide outlines some important health, mental health resources that are available to our students and their families. Please reach out to your student's counselor or one of our social workers if you have any questions. This slide shares some simple techniques that you can share with your students who may be feeling anxious with their return to in-person learning. We encourage you to explore these techniques with your students. Please help your student prepare for in-person learning by talking about what it might be like. Knowing in advance that your student will be around larger groups of people could help with a transition. Hallways and common areas will have more people passing through 
during passing periods. We must keep in mind that this has been a year since we've all been together and that the first week could be overwhelming. Please encourage your student to reach out to their counselor if they are having any trouble or difficulties. In order for us to be able to operate efficiently on a daily basis, we need the help of our parents and community members. Please consider either of these three options. With the increase in secondary families attending in person, we anticipate that our East Drive line will take longer. We certainly do not, we currently do not have enough volunteers or staff available and could use your help. Click on the link to sign up. Please continue to have patience with our teachers. They are simultaneously teaching both in-person and online learners, and it can be very stressful. Driveline procedures for secondary, and these are for our returning families and our new to STEM families who might be attending for the first time in person. As a reminder, in order for STEM to operate as a charter school within the Douglas County School District and within Highlands Ranch, we must have a transportation management plan. Please take some time to review the transportation management plan so that you fully understand how important it is. Additionally, please check out the East Drive Line process page that we have on our website that outlines how to access um, our East Drive Line. If you have a sibling in our elementary school, you will pick both students up through the elementary school drive line. You will enter the West Drive Line, which is the West parking lot, at 255. You will need to use Pick My Kid in order to pick up your elementary student through our West Drive Line. If you need a yellow placard, please request that through support at stemk12.org and indicate the student's name and teacher. Here are some helpful reminders of how our East Drive Line works. In the morning, you will enter the south access into our parking lot. You will, the right lane is designated for our carpool and high school drivers. The left two lanes are designated for middle and high school drive line drop off. You're gonna loop through the parking lot to access the unloading and loading area. You're gonna stop and wait until all vehicles around you have come to a complete stop and the attendant directs students to exit the vehicles. Our carpool lane is located in the middle parking aisle. Drive line is located in the south parking aisle. As you can see on the map, green indicates our carpool line and the yellow indicates our drive line. Once all students are unloaded, the drive line attendant will direct cars to proceed toward the right to exit. Both lanes will merge into one lane and turn right out onto Ridge Line. That is a right turn only. At 745, any vehicles in the farthest left lane of drive line lanes will be directed to make a left and circulate around the elementary building to exit onto Barron's Boulevard. In the afternoon, you will follow the similar procedure where you will enter through the south entrance. The left lanes will remain our middle and high school driveline lanes, while the right lane will continue to be designate, designated for our carpool and our high school drivers. You're gonna loop through the parking lot to access the unloading and loading area. Stop and wait until all vehicles around you have come to a complete stop and the attendant directs students to enter the vehicles. Our carpool is located in the middle school parking aisle, as you can see in the green, and our drive line is located in the south parking aisle, indicated in yellow. You will exit as directed by the attendant. Once all school students are loaded, the drive line attendant will direct cars to proceed toward the right to exit. Both lanes will merge into one lane and turn right out only onto Ridge Line. You can view these two helpful videos that we put together on your own, uh, which outline some helpful tips for our morning drop off and our afternoon pickup. Welcome back. Hey, Sam, Sam, okay. I'm back again. East Drive Line uh, will require placards, and those placards will be passed out to our families starting on Monday, March 22nd. Why do you need a placard? This is to prevent an overflow of cars. We will be asking a certain number of cars to come for pickup at 255 to 305, and then the second group of cars will come from 305 to 315. This will help to us to mitigate 
back up onto Ridgeline. The cars that uh, show up from 255 to 305 will receive a pink placard and any cars that arrive after 305 will receive a blue placard. Please do not come in, if you receive a blue placard, please do not come pick up on the next day during that pink time frame of 255 to 305. And additionally, please do not stack or park on Ridgeline um, to wait to then enter into our parking lot. That is a blind curve and that will create an accident. If you are transporting three or more students that are not all your own, please request a carpool placard from the attendant starting on Monday, March 22nd. A reminder for our high school drivers, we did have a parking pass lottery that occurred in August of 2020. Only students with a valid parking pass will be permitted to park. All students um, will have had to present a valid driver's license, vehicle registration, um, with a uh, uh, with um, up to date license plates um, in order to receive their parking pass. Um, we it likely looks like we do not have any additional passes that will be up for sale. So please do not come to school and park on campus without your parking pass. Um, additionally, please note parking spots will be limited and ticketing will be enforced. Also. You are not permitted to park in any of the surrounding businesses and cross over into um, STEM's campus. You will be ticketed and potentially towed by those business owners. As a um, reminder, this is our parking map. There's a legend right there in the bottom right hand corner that indicates where students, staff, visitors can park and additionally where there is no parking. This slide outlines our secondary lunches. The food service program at STEM is provided by the Douglas County School District Nutrition Services. You can click that link to access the secondary lunch menus that are updated each month. Meals are free for all Colorado students throughout the rest of the school year. You do not need to worry about adding any funds to their My School Bucks account as they will not be asked to provide their lunch, um, any funds in order to pay for the meals. Um, we do not serve breakfast, we only serve lunch, so please keep that in mind when sending your students to school. This video here outlines the guidance, the closed contact procedures that were updated in December. We shared this out in January when we returned for um, in-person learning uh, to our um, normal plans back then. So at your convenience, please go ahead and take a look at those videos and you can also click on that link for an extended close context explanation video if you have any additional questions. So this document here is one of our first documents that outlines our close context and how we handle quarantines. Um, please take some time to review this so that you understand um, what could potentially happen if we are, um, if we do have a presumed or positive case and we may need to identify close contacts and what the next steps are. This document here outlines what a close contact is. So please take some time to review this document so that you are aware in the event you do receive a letter from us that your student has been identified as a close contact. And these two documents, these remaining ones here on the right hand side, this is the at home screener that you can do on your own. And then on the left hand side, this is the guidance that you must follow in order to return to in person learning. Um, if your student um, is feeling ill or if they were at any point sent home for quarantine. And this is our outline of what we do in the event that there is a student who is at school who um, is feeling ill and what the procedure that we take in order to send them home. And finally, these three links are helpful ways in order to stay um, informed and in order for you to know how to communicate with us. Um, the second option there is our communications pathways. Please um, reference that prior to reaching out so that you can get connected with the appropriate person um, as quickly as possible. And that last option there is our feedback form. Um, while that form is not monitored 24 hours a day, we do monitor that every single day, um, every, pardon me, every um, school day, we monitor that form and we'll respond to you um, anywhere from 70, 48 to 72 hours. 
And that is the end of our presentation. Thank you so much. Please use that feedback form with any questions and please visit our website for more information.